Hi, and welcome to XR for Work. This is the show where we talk about the business and professional uses of immersive technologies. I recently published a paper on personal productivity in VR and covered four different platforms that I've used in uh, getting work done in a VR headset. One of those locations is here in the Oculus Home environment using the Oculus browsers now. To my understanding, this is how Meta uh, envisions the uh, evolution of what they call the infinite office. And so here I am kind of in the Meta home environment. I'm in the desert environment here, um, very pleasant setting. Uh, I've got my three browsers windows up in front of me. And uh, those are, that's the number that you can have. And they're kind of, they circle around me about 180 degrees. I've got my desk in front. I've got my chair identified in my room. Um, up there on the main screen in the middle, I have uh, my OneNote notes. Uh, because I use Microsoft Office 365, I can access all these Office documents and notes through a browser. And that's the intent is that uh, you use this setting when you can do your work in a browser. And you can see you can kind of move the menu out of the way and as I step forward towards the desk, I can switch from uh, the standing mode to the desk mode. And as I put my Oculus controllers down, my K830 keyboard uh, shows up here on the desk. And as the headset detects that the, uh, the controllers have been set aside, my hands start to appear and I can actually see my hands typing on the keyboard. Now I can also use the touchpad and, and then start using the mouse to interact with the environment around me, whether that's uh, putting a cursor at, at a location on one of the uh, uh, browsers and typing or actually manipulating the, the browsers and the environment. But I'll step back here and um, back into uh, you know standing mode and we'll take a look at some of the things here that we can do. So. Each of the browsers has a menu like you might expect the browsers to have, that little ellipse in the upper right-hand corner. I can kind of change the zoom feature so I can make my text bigger or smaller to my uh, liking. Um, I can then also highlight the corners of these browsers. And as you can see, I can manipulate the, the size, right? I can make it uh, ultra wide. I can make it uh, you know, mid-size. I can grab the bottom of the browser and, and move its position. I can make it more of a portrait view like you see here. So there's lots of ways that I can um, uh, manipulate the sizing of, of the browser and the window that I'm working in. And then also grab it and, and move it to one side and change uh, that, that browser that's in front of me that has focus. So I have a browser that has news and I have a browser that has emails and communications and ones that I have documents and work. And so I can move that around and, you know, if, if I want to look at something on the Wall Street Journal, pull that up in front of me. Um, if I want to look at my local Baltimore news, pull that up in front of me. And so this uh, just, you know, makes it really convenient to kind of separate out into those three silos what I'm working on at any particular time. But certainly, you know, just shifting my view one side to the other, um, it's all within uh, a 360 view in front of me. Um, and, and the browsers are, are smart in that they retain your logon information and your state. So when I reboot my headset, if these tabs have been loaded previously to, previous to the reboot, um, it remembers them and loads them all back up for me and logs right in. And, you know, in fact, I had recently logged into Twitter and gotten the email from Twitter saying, hey, we noticed you're logging in from a different browser. Is this you? And you can see I have Twitter, I have LinkedIn, um, I have Discord, um, I have my Microsoft uh, Office uh, documents up, and I can get to and, and manipulate all of this content material here quite, you know, quite easily with my controllers. Now, I can also use hand tracking if you're really into that, um, but for me, the controllers are just much more precise at this stage. As the hardware improves and hand tracking improves, we'll be able to do more with that. Now, again, here's my uh, office uh, dashboard with all the recent documents I've worked on. Here's a, the document that I was referring to earlier where I wrote about personal productivity 
NVR and in fact worked on a lot of that paper here um, in the Microsoft or in the Meta home environment as well as some other platforms. Um, but I'm able to work on that, you know, with my mouse and keyboard, or as I tend to do, actually use voice quite a bit. So, you know, as I place my cursor at a specific location on any screen that takes input, I can um, do this actually in one of two ways. Here in the uh, uh, meta keyboard, um, you'll notice down in the lower left-hand corner, there's a little microphone button. Now, if I click that, it's going to start picking up everything that I say and uh, doing voice dictation and pop that into the location there on the screen where the cursor is sitting. Um, and it does a fairly good job. It doesn't do a great job with punctuation um, at this stage, um, but it's better, I think, to uh, be able to go back and edit what you're typing rather than type it all out um, by hand or certainly with the controller. Um, unless you're a really good typist, which I'm not. Now also, because I'm a Microsoft Office 365 user, every time I bring a document up here in the web pages, you'll see that there's this little microphone icon up in the toolbar at the top of the app, uh, web app. And that also toggles on um, the microphone capability and allows you to do voice dictation into those Microsoft apps. And I use this quite frequently and I find it's a little bit more accurate and much better with the punctuation than I've found with the meta apps. And so you have a choice there of how you want to do your input. You can use you know, the keyboard that's on the screen with your hands or your controllers. You can use the keyboard at the desk, uh, the K830 or the Apple Magic, or you can use uh, voice in this case, which is, which is what I do. And of course you can see that I can manipulate where I wanna put that um, that keyboard at any given point too. And so um, let's also take a look at some of the other options that we have from a communication standpoint. And that is, you know, uh, built right into the, the Quest headset, obviously being part of Meta and Facebook, is the uh, capability to use Facebook Messenger. So any of those friends or colleagues that might be on Facebook Messenger, you're able to send and receive messages to right here on the, the headset. So you can pull up the people tab, you can go right into the messenger tab, and you kind of have uh, this history of recent messages and people that you've been talking to and, and can uh, initiate and receive Facebook messages right here within the, the headset. Now also, you can connect the Oculus app on your phone and allow notifications and messages from the phone also to flow into the headset. Now this is, this is one way so that uh, messages and notifications that you allow and select on the phone app only flow into the headset. You can't respond to them. But I still find this uh, really, really valuable because I know for me there's a huge frustration because I'm pretty tied to my phone and I like and need to know kind of what's going on at any given any given moment. Um, if I'm in the headset and I'm doing something and I hear my text messages go off, I have this decision I have to make to stop what I'm doing or uh, you know ignore ignore the message. In this particular case, what I'm doing is um, actually voice texting into uh, Outlook email, and that's sending a message actually to the phone, which pops up. Now, you can't record it. Uh, uh, Meta doesn't let you record the text as it comes in, but what'll happen is you get a pop-up in front of you, and you see uh, the sender, the subject, and some of the text, depending on how much it is. Now, again, you can click on that little bell icon on the main menu, and you can click on the little phone icon at the top to see your history of messages as they come in. So even if you don't kind of catch the message uh, or, or you're in the middle of doing something and you didn't quite see it, when you do get a chance to get a break, you can go back, uh, pull up this menu and go look at that, that particular message and at least get the gist of, of uh, what's going on. You know, is this important enough to come out of the headset and I need to go attend to this? or you know, was it a nuisance message and you know, I can keep doing what I'm doing. And so um, just looking at my list here to make sure that I've uh, kind of covering everything that I had intended to, 
Um, we've got, you know, I think I've got 13 browser tabs that are open here. So again, you know, if you count each of those tabs as kind of a potential app, if you will, it um, actually, you know, is a lot of information and viewing space that you're able to capture beyond just the three screens that you're seeing. And again, you can manipulate the size and input um, to suit you best. Um, you know, you you can also open other apps while you're here and you may notice down on my menu when it flashes into view the Facebook app that's there and if I were to click on that Facebook would pop up and one of my browser windows would go away but then if I clicked on the browser again the the browser would pop right back up and, and Facebook would go away so you do have this task switching that's available uh, to a certain extent here in in the home setting and um, uh, we uh, again have the desk we have the chair i can certainly just sit down you know i can wheel my chair down if i want to use my keyboard for input there now you can't move the windows kind of away from you so that positioning of the desk and the window can become uh something that you have to fiddle with a little bit so that you know it's not so much in your face it's like the first row of <laughs> of the movie theater but anyway, I hope this has been helpful. I hope uh, you maybe have learned something and we certainly appreciate you stopping by here at XR for Work. Give us, a, give us a thumbs up. Go visit the XR for Work community over on Facebook and we'll see you in the metaverse. Bye now.